Hate to them. So Finnish soldier on meth. Sounds amazing. Let's go. Military special forces guys doing meth while skiing. Did I get your attention? Yeah. Today we're talking about Imo Koivunen, the Finnish special forces soldier that took his entire unit's supply of crank and then proceeded to troll the Soviets and himself for two weeks about it. Before this video gets too far off the rails, we do have a sponsor, and that sponsor is We The People Holsters. They probably have the best quality to price ratio for any holster company on the market. Here's mine. It came with the clip and in the fancy gridline Kydex, and it cost $57, which is like half of what any other company was going to charge you. If you wanted to check them out, I'll have a link and a discount code down below. Let's get to this story. March 18th, 1940. Imo and his friends, a small group of Special Forces Finnish soldiers, have just finished conducting a three-day-long ski patrol and are returning back to base when they are ambushed by an entire platoon of Soviet soldiers. They have okay, so here we are in the middle of what we know as the Continuation War, which, lies, which lasted from 1941 to 1944 between Finland and the Soviet Union. Finland had been attacked by the Soviets during the Winter War and lost a couple of territories near St. Petersburg, but most of all, they put up a fierce resistance to the Red Army, shocking the world by holding for months while being severely outnumbered and outgunned, but eventually they lost and they had to give up a couple of regions. And fast forward 1941, Germany launches Operation Barbarossa on the Soviet Union and Finland seizes the opportunity to take its revenge on Stalin. But in 1944, things are getting ugly for Finland and Germany have nowhere near enough men to fight back, they have to retreat and get away. In order to do so, they go off the beaten path and attempt to blaze their own trail through unpacked snow. Imo, as fate would have it, would be the point man, having to do the majority of the work as far as beating down the unpacked snow goes. Now, they've been out skiing for three days straight, everybody's exhausted, but the level of work that Imo is having to dish out is almost unbearable and he's unable to set a pace that is going to allow them to escape. And the Soviets are catching up. So, Imo decides to take the high road, reaches into his pocket, and pulls out a bottle and inside of that bottle is all of his and his buddy's supply of Pervidin. Imo had been given all of it because everybody knew that Imo didn't care for taking Pervidin and this meant that Imo would keep it safe and nobody else would dip into it when they weren't supposed to. And if you don't know, Pervidin is the German miracle drug that came out in 1938, uh, also known as meth. And just to be clear, this isn't like Jesse Pinkman cooking it in the back of a van putting chili powder in it. This is high quality pharmaceutical grade nose torque, okay? This is inhalable horsepower and this man's about to take some. Goddamn right. So Imo pops off the lid and he wants to dump a single pill into his hand, which is the recommended dose. The problem is the Pervidin has been sitting in his pocket, half of it warm against his body, the other half getting cold against the outside of his jacket, and it is now congealed into one gigantic meth nugget, and the whole nugget falls into his mitten. He's unable. Okay, so Pervidin was massively used by Germany in World War II in France. We know it for the big offensive in the Ardennes in 1940 with companies under the effect of these euphoric drugs which prevented you to sleep and made you think that you're like invincible so they distributed about 35 millions of pills to their army and this drug is so powerful that you don't feel hungry you don't feel thirsty anymore and in this case you probably don't even feel the cold so it's probably a bit dangerous and the last occurrence i know of germany using it against france was in the 82 world cup with the german goalkeeper Harald Schumacher, aka the Butcher of Sevilla, doing some MMA on our striker, plunging him in the coma. Yeah, F you Schumacher able to break off a singular piece because, well, he has mittens on and he doesn't have the dexterity, so he says, fuck it, and eats the entire nugget of meth which was roughly 30 pills at one point. Okay, fast forward like 45 seconds. Imo feels incredible. He is a new man. He has gone from dragon ass to tripping balls and he has had a life altering revelation that he's been put on this planet to do two things and two things only. And that is to outrun the Soviets and steal catalytic converters. And those aren't even gonna be invented for like another 35 years. So guess what we're doing? We're outrunning these Soviets. This man begins blazing a path through unpacked snow quicker than anybody ever has ever. And the Soviets Soviets are just watching these guys take off like a rocket, like... 
They've gone to plaid. Over the course of the next hour, they managed to outrun the Soviets so bad that they just gave up. So they finally stopped, they regrouped, they wanted to see if anybody had been shot, they wanted to make sure everybody was doing okay before they carried on with their mission and journey back home. At that point, Imo did not sit still. He is pacing, he's walking around, he's talking to himself, and that's when his buddies realized, oh boy, Imo is higher than draft pussy on a fucking extension ladder, we gotta do something. So they decide it's probably a good idea to take away all of his ammunition and and his knife so he doesn't hurt himself or somebody else. So they take the ammo away from him, they turn around, they go to put it in somebody else's backpack so they can carry it, turn back around, IMO is fucking gone. Fast forward and I already think it's a miracle that his companions managed to disarm him at least partially without being killed. There's a movie out on Netflix about a bear that has eaten a packet of cocaine in a forest and starts killing drug dealers dealers en masse and I think it's more or less the same scenario that's going to play out here. Sorry to interrupt but guys I need your help. If you enjoy what I'm doing don't hesitate to like, subscribe and follow. Now back to the video unspecified amount of time later and Imo wakes up, looks around, has no idea where he is. You see, Imo had blacked out. And when I say blacked out, I don't mean he laid down and fell asleep. I mean, he proceeded to ski 62 miles in a random direction and then laid down and fell asleep. And he is now just waking up realizing that he has no recollection of which direction he went or came from and he has no idea where he is. At this point, a Soviet soldier hops out from behind a tree and begins shooting at Imo. Imo panics, gets to his feet, grabs his gun, lifts it, fires at the Soviet soldier, click, fuck. His friends had taken all of his ammunition. So he grabs his empty gun and throws it at the Soviet soldier. It hits him and he explodes into a pile of snow. Imo, what the fuck? Looks up, oh, it was just a tree branch covered in snow the whole time. He is now hallucinating. So not really knowing what else to do, he straps his skis back on and proceeds to ski around looking for his friends or anything, really. And after an hour or two, thank God, he sees his friends camp off in the distance and they have a fire going. It's all gonna be okay, we're good, he's gonna be saved. So Imo takes off skiing towards the camp. He's skiing. Imo skis right into the middle of the camp. Cool guy power slide. Psh. Friends, did you miss me? He looks at his buddies. His buddies look at him. He looks at his buddies. Those aren't his buddies. Those are the Soviets. Shit. Time to go. Imo takes off again. The Soviets attempt to chase him for a little bit, but I mean, the man is basically tweakers on ice right now. You've got no chance at actually catching him. So already during the winter war of 39, these Finnish soldiers on ski were a nightmare for the Soviets because one, they were exceptional skiers, like guys born on their skis. Two, they had exceptional knowledge of the terrain, which coupled with the previous points made them impossible to catch. Their tactics of surprise attacks before disappearing made them as easy to catch as smoke. And finally, they had outstanding marksmanship qualities. These guys were deadly as F. Imo then proceeds to ski until he's tired and then he lays down and goes to sleep just on the ground outside. He wakes up, it's dark out, he can't see anything, and he realizes, hey, I'm hungry. So he gets a fire going and then he walks around grabbing some pine buds and leaves and whatever else he can find, sticking it in his canteen cup, grabs some snow, puts that in there, cooks it over the fire and kind of mashes it all together in this like pine bud stew gruel type thing. He eats it, he thinks it's fucking delicious, one of the best meals he's ever had because, well, Math. Then he goes back to bed. Wakes back up. At least if he's hungry and if he manages to sleep, it shows that his body is evacuating some meth or is subhuman now and meth has transformed him into something else which organically works with pervitin. I don't know. Still full of energy, decides that he's gonna go look for his buddies more. He skis around, he skis and he skis all day long. And then he finds a cabin. He walks up to the cabin, grabs a doorknob. It's real, it's not a hallucination. So next thing, he strips all the copper out of it. No, I'm just kidding. He opens the door because it's unlocked because this is a tradition in this part of the world where there's, you know, people could freeze to death. You just leave the cabin unlocked in case somebody is in Imo's situation. You don't want them to freeze to death. So Imo goes inside, he gets a fire going. Now, because of the meth, Imo elects to light the fire in the middle of the cabin on the floor rather than in the fireplace because, you know, 
obviously. He then proceeds to go to bed and all throughout the night, the fire keeps getting hotter and hotter. So he keeps like shimmying away from it and shimmying away from it over and over again. And then finally his back hits a wall and he wakes up and realizes that the entire cabin is on fire. So he's like, shit. So he gets up, goes outside the cabin, puts his back against the wall of the outside of the cabin and then goes back to sleep. Math. But at this point, you are supposed to be dead because you've been intoxicating because of the smoke inside the cabin. And also, how can you sleep with your back against a wooden cabin, which is on fire? Well, th this guy is incredibly lucky at this point. So Imo wakes up again, it's dark out. He hears growling off in the distance as there's a pair of yellow eyes staring at him. He looks behind him, the cabin completely burnt to a crisp as these eyes keep getting closer and closer and there's growling and out of the shadows leaps Hugh Jackman. Wait, what the fuck? So, sorry, a Wolverine, not the Wolverine. A Wolverine, still, I mean, it's better, but not a lot better, okay? This thing is 65 pounds of teeth, claws, fur, and bad attitude. And this thing will absolutely kill Imo if Imo lets it. Imo is now in a fight for his life, so he pulls out his knife and begins fighting a fucking Wolverine while tripping out on meth. He is kicking and punching and stabbing this Wolverine and he finally gets on top of the Wolverine as he straddles it and plunges his knife into the Wolverine's chest as the life from the Wolverine leaves its body and it falls limp to the ground. At that point, Imo remembers, wait a minute, my friends took my knife. He looks at his knife, that's not his knife, that's his compass and now it's broke. Shit. I mean... Also kind of cool, though, because he just killed a Wolverine with a compass. He looks down at the dead Wolverine. He's sitting on top of a log. He had hallucinated the entire thing again. Meth. Okay, part of me is relieved that this was an hallucination because I was feeling bad for the Wolverine. And this sounds more and more like The Revenant, but with Leo completely high on drugs and hyper aggressive. Oh, I want to see this movie. So Imo gets up off the log that he just killed, looking around, not knowing what to do. In the darkness of night, he sees a fire off in the distance. So he straps on his skis and starts making his way towards that fire. And he's skiing and he's skiing and he's skiing all night long. And he's going and he's going. And this fucking fire is not getting any closer. It's almost like it's running from him. And he keeps going towards it and towards it longer and longer. And finally, dawn breaks and Imo realizes that he's been chasing the North Star, thinking it was a fire for like the last eight hours because meth. So now it's morning, Imo still has no idea where he's going, so it's like, well, better find some copper. I mean, my friends, he's gotta find his friends, so he just starts skiing around looking for any signs of human life at this point. And he's skiing and he's skiing and he's going and he's going, and he finally comes across this abandoned German forward observational base, and he starts making his way towards it. The problem with this was, whenever the Germans abandoned something in World War II, they usually booby-trapped it, and that's what happened here, because Imo skis over a landmine. Blowing up his foot, throwing him to the ground, and Imo's like, that's it, I'm dead, for sure, there's no way I'm making it out of this. And he just lays there. Uh, we have no idea how long he laid there. He said he laid there for a week, but that dude's high as a kite on meth. He could have been there for 45 minutes. We have no idea. But he lays there and he lays there, literally too high to die. And then he just gets bored and he's like, fine, I'll live. And he gets up. But there's a point where you are just supposed to die in the cold in such conditions because it's raising cold there. It's March and we are in polar regions, but maybe with your heart tension, you can be kind of immune to cold. Yeah, I don't know. Up and he starts walking back towards the base again. He makes it all the way to the building, you know, grabs a doorknob. Well, at least the base is real. The landmine sure as fuck was real. The base better be real. The base is real, grabs a doorknob, opens the door. That's booby trap too. Blows up in his face, yeets him 30 yards the other direction as he lands flat on his back with the door on top of him. And he's like, okay, now for sure, I'm gonna die. There's no way I'm making it out of this. I'm done. And he just lays there. He completely gives up and he just waits for death to come get him. And he's laying there and one day passes and two days pass and three and four and five and six, seven days pass. And he's still just laying there like this is taking forever. And then finally some Finnish soldiers come up and are like, hey, 
Do you want some help? And he's like, holy shit, uh, yeah, that'd be great. So the Finnish guys start making their way over to him, and then one of them steps on a fucking landmine, and then the other two Finnish soldiers are like, well, we can only save one of you, and we're gonna save the guy that we came with. Um, if we get this guy saved, we'll let him know to come back and save you later. Peace, goodbye. And just left him laying there, again. So he thinks to himself, maybe if I can survive a couple more days, I might actually make it out of this. So he starts trying. He gets a little fire going next to him. He starts melting snow in his canteen cup to drink water to hydrate. A Siberian J at some point lands next to him. He takes his ski pole and smacks it to death, pulls the Siberian J over to him, grabs it, and just Ozzy Osbourne's this bird raw, just eats the whole thing, trying to get any amount of calories inside of him. And then after three more days, they come back and they save Imo and he completely blacks out. Imo comes to, he's in a Finnish hospital, where he's informed that he has been missing for 14 days and they found him 250 miles from where he originally departed his friends. He now went- All of this in the end of the Second World War, at a time when the Red Army was in full steamroller mode. So it's already a huge stroke of luck to have survived that and a good opportunity to stop there war-wise and check out of the Second World War in the spring of 1944 if you are in the Axis forces weighs a mere 95 pounds and has a resting heart rate currently of 200 beats per minute, 14 days after taking all of the meth. So Imo proceeds to do the logical thing, makes a full recovery and lives a long happy life until passing away at 71 in 1989 because he's finished and that's just how they get down. Yeah, if you're not picking up what I'm trying to tell you, this man actually may have seen Star Wars the original series in theater, okay? Could you imagine him taking his kids to the movie theater just being like, we didn't call it the force back in my day. We called it Pervidin. Seriously, it's pretty. <laughs> it also makes me think of if you're familiar with the comics Asterix with the magic potion. It's funny that the only two Finnish soldiers that I know off the top of my head are Imo and Simo Hoya. Simo, deadliest sniper of all time, over 500 kills. Imo, the most unkillable tweak. Simo was nicknamed the White Death by the Russians. He had between 500 and 700 kills in 1939 within only 100 days before he got wounded by a bullet in the jaw. This guy was barely 1.52 meter high. It's about five feet and he refused to use spotting scopes because they were in the way. His famous tactic was to compact the snow in front of him so that the shot did not shake the snow, which could then give away his position. He also kept snow in his mouth so that the steam from his breathing wouldn't give him away. And he was able to remain motionless for hours, slightly buried under the snow at temperatures of between minus 20 and minus 40 degrees, wearing an all white camouflage outfit. Yeah. ever. Don't worry, this story keeps going, meth. Imo's son was interviewed about his dad, to which he said that his dad never really talked much about his time in service, but there was one point later in Imo's life when he decided to write in to a local newspaper that was having a competition for who had the best craziest military story ever. And he wrote his story down, mailed it in, and he was informed, congratulations, you've got second. How the fuck did this guy get second place with this story? Did Simo Hoya enter the same competition? Because that's the only logical explanation, other than that there was some Karen on the judge board that was like, I don't know, this story seems a little too unbelievable if you ask me. Bang. To which my argument is, look at him. Do you think that guy's lying about this story? Do you really? Because homeboy looks like he's about to hit a T intersection. And go Honestly, on this picture, he still looks like he's high on drugs. Go straight, okay? That's not hair product. He just moves that fucking fast now. There's no way he's lying about this story, and I'm legitimately mad he didn't win this fucking competition for some reason. Okay, uh, this story is getting out of hand. We need to end this video. Um, I guess, in conclusion, it's important to bear in mind with how incredible this story is that IMO is the exception and not the example. You should not do drugs because they are in fact bad for you, okay? Don't do drugs. Also, don't fight the Finnish in winter in Finland where they have home field advantage. It's just a bad time. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang.
out. So Imo decides to take the high road, and, and if you don't know, <laughs> so fucking stupid. Uh, a fucking Siberian J lands remotely close to him. He takes a ski pole. Fucking watch out! Grabs this. <laughs> oh, I hate everything. <laughs> what a terrible blooper. And that's the real life of a content creator on YouTube. I have to do the same thing every time I cannot speak English anymore and start yelling. So once again, thanks to the fat electrician for these stories. Don't do drugs. Don't touch US boats. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye.